Well, welcome to the second video tutorial for um, the poetry of Wilfred Owen, which is core text for the E9 unit representations of war. And um, let's get started on Anthem for Doomed Youth. The first thing we notice about this poem is, of course, the title, and and the title comes across straight away as being ironic. Now, the word anthem is um, is a refers to a song that we sing to celebrate something that we really care about. Um, you have anthems for your country, you have anthems for your school, anthems for clubs, anthems for large groups or concepts that um, we really do care about and we celebrate when we sing about them. But this is an anthem for doomed youth. This is for the, the generation of young men who died in their millions on the, in World War I. Um, and so this is Owen's anthem for them. This is um, his bitterly ironic poem about the, this entire generation and uh, talking about how the societies that these men come from or came from, um, this is how they are celebrated. All right. So, so if we're not understanding that bitter irony, we really can't understand this poem. All right. So the metaphor of the anthem um, gets extended and and changes somewhat in the in the poem proper because it moves into the whole funeral ritual. Um, so we get a metaphor of a funeral uh, running through the whole poem, and Owen breaks down the funeral into the elements or sim symbol symbols that sort of make up um, funerals or go into funerals, um, and um, we'll talk about that as we go through. All right. So first of all, let's look at um, the structure. Structure is two stanzas, quite a short poem, and both stanzas start with a question. And we'll see up here um, what passing bells for these who die as cattle, and what candles may be held to speed them all. So straight away we're picking up on, he's asking the question, what bells get rung for these men um, when they die? Who holds candles um, to speed them to the next life? And we get other um, other funeral elements here: mockeries, um, choirs, um, pall, flowers. These are all the elements. Um, well, not all the elements. Um, oh wait, we've got one more: prayers, or orisons. That's another word for prayers. Um, these are many of the elements that go into a, a Christian funeral. Um, and so Owen goes through these elements and he asks, he's asking the question, what are these, how are these things, how um, represented um, or in, the, um, in the way that these men die, this doomed youth? Right. So he's using a fun the funeral um, uh, ritual as a metaphor um, to describe the horror of the way these guys are discarded like cannon fodder on the battlefield. All right. Good, so let's get started. So the first bit here is um, what passing bells for these who die as cattle up the top. I might just get rid of this down here. Um, and we'll come back to it. Um, and then So he asks the question, notice the simile, who die as cattle. These are, they don't die as people, they die as cattle. Uh, simile there um, to describe um, the wholesale slaughter of this um, generation. Only the, only the monstrous anger of the guns, only the stuttering rifles rapid rattle can patter out their hasty horizons. Alright, so passing bells, that's a reference to the notion that in the village or the town where someone died, the church bells would be rang, rung and everybody would know that someone has died and often people would send a message or send find out who, who's who gone and um, it was a way to send the message to the community that someone has passed away. And so Owen's asking, what bells do these guys get? Well, the bells they get are the sound of the huge monstrous anger of guns, the sound of guns, the sound of the machine guns, artillery and so forth, um, can patter out their hasty prayers, horizons. Right. So again, this comparison between funeral ritual 
and the reality of um, the battlefield and um, and the irony of um, the bitter irony of um, comparing what should be a, a ritualistic um, thankful uh, send off into this wholesale slaughter of young men um, killed like cattle all right so that's that section there next one no mockeries for them now mockeries that's a reference to this idea that in christian funerals we have a picture of the person on near the coffin or in front of the coffin with flowers around it so there's no mockeries for them no prayers nor bells nor any voice of mourning save the choirs and he's saying well the only one the only thing they really get is choirs and again he goes back to the sound of the guns the shrill demented choirs of wailing shells a straight up metaphor of he's calling the wailing shells demented choirs um, crazy uh, psychopathic is the um, reference to demented there and bugles calling for them from sad shy so it's a real reference to sound the choirs the singing what is it that sends these guys off the sound of the shells and the sad bugles back home in remembrance ceremonies so they do get remembered somewhere it's just that they get remembered um, in sadness not in happiness they don't celebrate their lives they um, they're just this wholesale remembrance of a, of a large group no sort of specific reference to the individual here at all, all right? And we continue with the, with the ongoing funeral metaphor. Right. What candles may be held to speed them all? Now, speed them means take them to the next life. Speed them on to the next life. So what candles do these guys get? Well, not in the hands of boys. That's a reference to altar boys. Not in the hands of boys, but in their eyes shall shine the holy glimmers of goodbyes. So the only light will be the last light just before they die in their eyes. All right. A real sort of sad notion of that moment of death and uh, the going out of the light in their eyes and he's saying that's the only candles these guys are going to get to take them to the next life and then the last section is a reference to gr grief the huge grief that's left behind and he said well they will be remembered to some some degree but probably only in the memories and the faces of their you know the girls that they left behind the women that they were probably meant to marry or um, um, or hoping to marry or at least um, spend time with um, when they got when they got home or the women they left behind um, and the so let's read it the pallor of girls brows now the pallor is the color so we're thinking of really white gray that color of sorrow and grief shall be their Paul now Paul is the um, the, sh the um, cloth that is thrown over the top of a um, of a coffin so the only things that will cover their this um, their funeral, the only sort of um, uh, I suppose the colouring, the only colour that will represent um, the funeral here is the colour in the girls' faces, because I think the pall um, was a sort of a coloured cloth um, that went over the coffin. So the only colour that will represent their death in this funeral will be the colour in girls' faces. Um, and then their flowers, the tenderness of patient minds. So again, another straight metaphor, saying the flowers that would be at the funeral is, is only represented in the minds of these girls, still remembering them after so many years. And each slow dusk a drawing down of blinds. So this sort of really last line of sadness where you're closing closing the world out and, and being alone with their grief these girls who remember these these um these men or boys that were sent to war um and each each night they um when it really matters they put down the blinds and they're alone with their grief um so a reference to the huge sadness that's been left behind um you know, there hasn't been a funeral, a proper funeral. There's no proper send-off here. The reason funerals exist is to, is for the community of loved ones to send off the dead, the dead person, and and be happy that they're moving on to the next life and celebrate their life. But these guys, 
they didn't have that they didn't have the sand off um, and so all that's left behind is um, is an enormous sadness in the um, communities and, and families that they left behind all right so that's pretty much the poem and its analysis um, so just to finish off our evaluation of it um, it's it's bitterly ironic it's this notion that here's an entire generation of young men sent to their death like cattle um, and which is not fine but what makes it worse is the societies that sent them there really have not um, have not sent them off properly they just get buried in unmarked graves there's no notion of who these guys were um, there's no celebration of their individual lives they are there's no proper funeral rite given to them um, and all really that's left behind because of that is enormous sadness um, and um, Owen is bitter about it Owen, Owen thinks that it's a great sin um, that has been committed against this generation and um, th this poem is the way that he expresses that alright hope this helps um, good luck answering the questions